Hi, this is Windows Phone Central. Today we're taking a look at VB8 for Windows Phone 8. This is a Game Boy Advance emulator, which does not work on Windows Phone 7. Now, uh, to get games onto your phone, you will need to upload them to SkyDrive. Linking is a simple matter of, you know, putting in your password and stuff. Then you choose to import ROMs, at which point you'll manually import whatever ROMs you might have uploaded. Um, you can also import and export save games so that you don't lose your save data. The game's got a pretty decent amount of settings right now. You can scale the size of the virtual controller. Um, I do have some criticisms of that that we'll address in a minute. There's various video options like changing the aspect ratio. I like to leave it unchanged. Um, a couple of sound options. Now let's take a look at the games. Uh, it comes with with a free little Game Boy Advance demo game. I've already deleted that, so we'll just... Here's a ROM list with a selection of different games for it. So you can play um, with a vertical perspective like this. Definitely not the ideal way to play. The sound is not bad. It is just a little bit staticky, so it's not like 100% quality, but it's more than acceptable for an emulated game. You can see it easily displays the parallax backgrounds with full detail. Here we've got Final Fantasy VI Advance. This is one of the best RPGs ever made, according to many people. So considering that the Xbox Windows Phone lineup is so lacking in RPGs, going with an emulator and playing a few classics like, a few classics like this is certainly a good option. There's a few different options you can do mid-game. You can save state instantly by pushing the save button, load state, reset the game, go back to the main menu, or select individual save states. We'll just go back to the main menu. Here's Sonic Advance 3. You get to choose from several different partner characters. Amy, Tails, Knuckles. Now, the only thing I don't really like about this emulator is the virtual controls. I mean, they don't, they're a little bit ugly, but, um, you know, they work well enough. Having the shoulder buttons up here, it's a, a reasonable compromise. So what I don't like about it is the, the D-pad itself. It's really easy, especially if you want to shrink the D-pad at all, then it just becomes kind of unplayable because it's too hard to keep your thumb on the D-pad. I would, I would keep it fairly large unless the dev ever chooses to uh, make an adjustment here. So basically while playing, I'll often press a little far to the right and my character stops moving. That happened just now. Uh, it gets pretty annoying in a fast action game like Sonic. But if I'm playing an RPG like Pokemon or Final Fantasy, I'd be a lot less likely to notice it, or at least I'd be less frustrated by it. Other than that, the controls work well. It's just a matter of keeping your thumb on the D-pad, especially after you adjust the size. Let's take a look at that. You can adjust your settings mid-game, but you can just hop back here and then resume the game. Okay, but let's take the controller down a bit just to see what it's like when you've got it smaller. Okay, now I'm pressing where I'd normally press right, and it does absolutely nothing, because shrinking it, it pulls the D-pad way down too close to the edge of the screen, so I have to keep my thumb down here, which is just really hard to do. Kind of reminds me of Earthworm Jim on uh, Windows Phone, actually, the way that D-pad isn't very well located. The buttons aren't so much of a problem, it's really just the D-pad. If we could position it wherever we wanted, or if it just, you know, accepted presses, a little bit beyond where the graphics shows. Either one of those things would fix it up. But in the end, it's uh, sort of a minor complaint. It all depends on what kind of games you want to play, and hopefully this will be fixed. 
Um, there's a wonderful library of games on Game Boy Advance to be able to pick and choose from them and play them on your phone via emulation. It's really great. This emulator costs $3. It's not free. But uh, if you consider how, you know, how much potential fun you can get out of this one program, it's definitely worth the money in my opinion.